In this lesson, we'll learn about components. The key principle behind the React library is the organization of your application or your user interface into smaller components, which of course begs the question, what is a component? The easiest way to describe a component is just a piece of the user interface. We can call it a chunk of the user interface or a section of the user interface. The best analogy that I can provide here is this. Imagine a jigsaw puzzle in real life. A jigsaw puzzle consists of multiple smaller pieces that we add together to form the puzzle. Imagine your web page like a jigsaw puzzle and imagine the components as being the puzzle pieces that we plug in together in order to make the final web page. And there are two benefits to components. The first is components enable reusability. We can render these pieces multiple times in multiple locations throughout the application or throughout the interface without needing to rewrite each of those pieces from scratch. All right, we're gonna see some examples of components on a real world website in just a moment and that will help clear up uh, any confusion you may have about that reusability because we'll notice on many real world websites that there's going to be certain chunks or pieces that just inherently repeat themselves, all right? But reusability is not the only benefit of components. A second benefit is that components help us break down the interface into smaller pieces, which inherently reduces complexity. Instead of having, for example, one HTML file with 10,000 lines, we can separate and break that HTML file into smaller components each of which is its own little chunk of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in isolation where our brain doesn't have to worry about the larger whole. We can kind of just zoom in and focus on this one chunk, build it up, get it to work, and then again, combine these chunks, these components into the final product, all right? So enough talk, let's take a look at some examples in the real world. We'll start with one of the most popular websites on the internet, YouTube. And I want you to take a second to look at this front page of YouTube and think about the elements on this page that repeat. Think about the common visual chunks uh, that stand out to you in this interface. Of course, the most obvious one for me is these so-called video cards. You can see eight of them uh, displayed right here. And each video card has a similar idea behind it. There's always the image up top. There is the video title. Next to that, we have the channel icon. Then we have the channel name, we have the number of views, and then we have the date that it was posted. And that pattern mostly repeats throughout all of these eight video cards that we see on the screen. Now, video cards have some degree of variation. For example, if you look at the one that's third from the left, you'll see that it's a live streamer. So the uh, video watch count is missing and it's replaced by a red live button, but we can still sort of get the visual sense that it's still fundamentally a video card, right? Each component doesn't literally have to be the exact same, but it's kind of structurally the same. The piece is the same sort of idea. It's capturing the same visual chunk of the user interface, even if there's some small variations in there, such as that live button, right? Another example is on the left-hand navigation menu. Each of those menu items has a very similar kind of visual representation. There's always a little bit of padding, then there's an icon like the house or the compass, then a little bit of margin and some text. And even though this is a pretty small chunk of the user interface, it's still something that is repeating, right? We can make quote unquote one component, we could call it something like navigation menu item, and then we can reuse it in React to form the home item, the explorer item, the shorts item, etc. Right. Now, that is the first benefit of components, and that is the reusability. But another benefit is just simply organization. It's great if components are reusable, but they don't have to be. So for example, if we look at just the very top of YouTube, and we see that top section, which we can call a header, we can see there is the hamburger icon, the YouTube logo, the search bar, the sign-in button, etc. If we organize all of that as one component, like top nav or top header, it's highly unlikely that we're going to reuse that component many times throughout our user interface, like we might reuse a video card component. However, for the purposes of organization, creating a top nav component might be beneficial because again, we don't have to worry about the rest of the user interface and its layout, and we can develop just that section, just that piece of the interface 
in isolation. We can worry about the top navigation and just its HTML, its CSS, and JavaScript without having to worry about the rest of the page. So purely from a perspective of reducing complexity and simplifying and breaking down problems into smaller problems, components help us reason in that sort of uh, mindset of, of smaller things that we're focusing on, isolated and worked on independently. Now, this is a popular entertainment site, but let's take a look at where we can identify components in totally different sites on the internet. So for example, here is amazon.com. This is what happens if you search for React. You'll see a bunch of product listings for React books. And if we look at these four product listings, we can once again start to see the commonality that might suggest that it would be a good candidate for a component. So maybe we can call this component something like product card or book item, and it would consist of an image, a title, the author, a star rating, et cetera. And then once we develop that component, we can reuse it each time, customizing things like the book image and the book title, but still retaining the core structural idea of having this box that displays some image and then text below it, right? Uh, just because we have a component does not mean that there is no concept of variation. We certainly can vary things up, but there's still the concept of commonality, something that looks and functions fundamentally the same. I do want to point out in case it's not apparent that it's up to us as developers to decide what is a proper component, right? You could technically have a React application that is one huge component that renders everything, but that defeats the purpose of React. Um, there's no technical definition of how small a component has to be or how large it has to be. It's up to us to identify the pieces of the web page and break them down in whatever way we think is best to make it easier for us to work and reason about the application. There's no right answer. You just get better at identifying these components and good candidates for components the more you practice with React. All right? And again, the benefit of reusability comes into play here. So uh, components can consist of other components. So for example, if you look at that star rating system where you rate the product out of five stars, we can see that a component being utilized in other places on Amazon's website but we can also utilize that component within a larger component of the product card. So components are not just chunks of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They can also be uh, pieces of other pieces. They can be composite pieces that uh, render other components within themselves. Components can render other components within themselves. And that's what allows you, again, to have uh, smaller puzzle pieces that connect into larger puzzle pieces that themselves can be plugged into the larger puzzle. Right, so components can reuse other components. That is a key feature of React as well. One more example to show you, we've been on a, a uh, entertainment site, we've been on an e-commerce site. This final example is Google Finance, which is a serious business site. But once again, looking at this user interface, we can start to see common visual elements. For example, for these stocks, we have these tickers where we have the uh, abbreviation for the company, we have the company name, its stock price, et cetera. Once again, we're starting to see common visual elements. It's totally okay if some of those elements are different. For example, the first stock ticker has the dollar amount in red and the little tablet on the right, it has a different background color, but that still doesn't change the fact that these things fundamentally look the same, right? These tickers are the same idea. They're this horizontal box that is displaying multiple pieces of information, right? It's totally okay for there to be variation. It can still function as the same component. Another example is on the bottom right. When we look at the earnings calendar, we can see each of these calendar events, we could call them. And the, again, these are good candidates for, for being a component that is reused multiple times. And that component can consist of a blue box with the date, then the company name, the date, and that calendar icon on the right. And that's all that React is. It's just writing files that represent components, which are just chunks of the user interface. And in those files, we isolate the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript for that little chunk. We make it work in independence, and then we add up these components together to make the final user interface. We just take this large problem of our interface, we break it down into smaller uh, pieces, we work on those pieces, and then we aggregate them back up together. And as you'll come to discover, this paradigm was super helpful when React was introduced uh, almost a decade ago, because it just helped us reason about a web page in a much, in much simpler terms. Instead of having really large HTML files that try to render all of these pieces together, uh, even if you split it up into different HTML files, 
that still did not necessarily enable reuse because you might still have had this calendar event code duplicated across different HTML files and different pages. In short, it becomes difficult to kind of isolate these common pieces uh, and, and have reusability and have clean code. React was truly a game changer because it gave us the library and the framework of thinking uh, of the page as a collection of components, as a collection of reusable chunks, pieces, segments, whatever word you want to use, thinking of the web page as a collection of reusable uh, chunks that we add together to form the greater whole. So hopefully that gives you a high level understanding of what we mean when we say components. Obviously, we still have to learn the React specific syntax for defining that, but hopefully you understand the benefit of what how components help us reason and uh, how they were such a big game changer and how you can sort of look at a web page and see the structurally similar elements. All right, that's all there is to cover in this lesson. So I will see you in the next one.